Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering an extremely important topic, how to replace your private keys on Near Protocol. The reason why this is extremely important is twofold. First, every single day I am coming across new attacks on Twitter. There have been a series of recent exploits on Solana. There have been ongoing attacks on Ethereum. Just 10 minutes ago, I saw a tweet from this lady. She actually works for MetaMask. They do not understand how this is happening. They're just prompting everyone to move all their assets from their existing wallets onto new wallets. And she gives some advice there around not having all your wallets with the same private key. I am not one to rejoice in other people's misery. But every time I see these tweets, I just keep thinking back to how cool the near protocol account model and architecture is. And that is the second reason why this is extremely important. The account permissioning model on Nier is one of those things that every time I mention that to somebody that actually knows about technology, they love it. Their eyes glaze over and they just want to dive deep into the documentation and munch on all that technical knowledge. So today, I'm going to try to dump it down as much as possible so that we know how this is possible. What do we mean by rotating private keys? Let's very quickly dive into the Nier documentation. We know that the default on Nier is that every account has human readable accounts. No one wants to be transferring assets to 0x. Blah, 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 blah. We want to be transferring assets to pizzaboy69.nier. Easy does it, easy to remember, no fear of making typos, etc. But the Nier core team did not stop at making it very user for the user experience. They actually went above and beyond implementing a key and architecture model that, honestly, it's kind of mind-boggling. Perhaps the easiest way to illustrate this would be to look at this marvelous chart comparing Ethereum and Near. First, let's look at the public identifier. This is what is known as a public key. On Ethereum, the public key is just the raw string 0x1269. On near that public identifier is the account ID or the human readable account. There is also, I guess, a random raw string somewhere, but as far as users go, we only see that human readable account. Then we start getting into the juicy bit, the secret key. On Ethereum, all accounts only have one private key. And the characteristics of this private key is that just like in the Lord of the Rings, whoever has that key, has full access to everything. On near things are different. There are two types of keys. The full access key would be equivalent to the Ethereum private key, namely you get access to everything. And there is a function call key. This gets really cool and I will be making a video about key palm and some of the amazing functionality that you can unlock for end user applications. But for now, all that we really want to know and that we care about is that you can issue more than one full access key on Near, and that full access keys have the power to delete other private keys, including themselves. That is what it would be known as locking down a wallet or, or, or a contract. I do have a podcast coming up with Ben from Keepum, who does a fantastic job at illustrating some of these differences and nuances. But for now, let's jump into the step-by-step -step on how to replace your private keys. First, you may be wondering, this video is entertaining, but is it for me? I think every single person should get into the habit of rotating the private keys, especially because on Near, because we are able to claim these amazing names such as pizzaboy 69near send me some tips. We don't want to depart with our beloved account names. This is where we are accruing a reputation. This is where we may have assets deployed all over the DeFi ecosystem, you name it. But the truth is, North Koreans are getting pretty good. And the chances that your wallet becomes compromised at some point are pretty good. So. Let's dive into the Meteor wallet. The last thing that I want to clarify is that I will be using Meteor wallet for the private key rotation, but naturally there are more than one methods. This could be done through CLI. This could be done through the traditional near wallet. This can be done through the here wallet. And those are just the methods that I'm familiar with. 
If you want me to make more videos covering how to do it using some of these other platforms, let me know. For now, let's look into how to do it in Le Meteor. The first thing I've done on Meteor Wallet is to shift over into Testnet. This is the best place to fuck around and find out. What we'll do is let's create a brand new wallet. This is the absolute worst operational security. Don't be taking screenshots of your private seed phrase. Definitely do not copy into a Google Docs. But because this is a quick demo, let's just ram through. First one is view secret phrase, then expert private key, and third, manage full access keys. So let's just start by copying this into our very unsafe Google Doc and then go back and copy the private keys. I'm just doing this to compare every private key should have a sit phrase attached to it. And now we'll go back and click on manage full access key and rotate your private keys. Let's create a second full access key. Generate and use it phrase recovery key for this wallet. And now we have two private keys. It is now showing us a seed phrase and a private key for the second key that we issued. The next step is to now delete the first key. The wording here I found a little bit confusing. It says revoke access. Are you sure you want to remove this access key from your near account? Be sure this access key is not linked to any recovery methods you still want to use. They will not work anymore. Okay, let's remove that first key and it's gone. There's a couple of things here to see what's happening. Mostly out of curiosity, I want to see what's happening on the Explorer. So we go to the testnet, paste the wallet address and beautiful. And see how the key has been deleted, the new one created. And now the real test of time is I'm going to remove the account from Meteor Wallet. Then I'm going to try to import the account again. This is the process that you would use on any wallet or on any browser if you want to import an existing wallet. Let's click on import. Here we have two options. You can import using a secret phrase or a private key. Let's try importing first with the seed phrase or the private key of the first key that we generated, the one that's meant to be eliminated. We've entered the seed phrase for the first wallet. No account found. Couldn't find any account linked to that secret recovery phrase. The amazing thing is put yourselves in the shoe of a hacker. You left your laptop open at a hackathon. You went to take a shit. Somebody sat down and they scoured through your files. They have your 12 words. They want to take all your... And just like this, in less than three minutes, I'd say, maybe less because we've been exploring a few things, you have already replaced your keys. Let's now try the second seed phrase and we should be able to import. And just like that, we have created an entirely new wallet with Meteor Wallet, added a second full access key, deleted the first full access key, and just to test around, removed the new wallet from Meteor Wallet, and then test both access keys to see whether they've actually been deleted and they work. And as we've seen, the first full access key is completely gone. It is totally useless to the dirty hacker that may have it. And now we have a brand new full access key. This is extremely cool functionality. As far as I'm concerned, this is unique to the near ecosystem. So please make sure that we use it to keep all of our accounts safe. Let me know if you find this information useful and I'll see you soon. Enjoy.